Oh my goodness. Hi everybody. It's Oliver's Papa. I just went and got my, my GameStop dividend bag. And I got Oliver one too. See? There's one for Oliver. And then there's one for Oliver's mama. And I got a, a few others for some other important people in, in, in our lives that, um, well, we want them to have uh, something to carry around them big dividends that are eventually going to start coming our way. Now, you might think to yourself, well, <laughs> Oliver's Papa. How can you be so sure? Well, I can't. I can't be sure. There is no sure thing. You got death and taxes, you know, suffering, you know, the eventual, the wonderful. Hi. Hi, are you going to cut me off there, lady? Yeah. See, I don't, I don't get road rage. Oliver's Papa doesn't do that, especially in this day and age when everybody's angry. Everybody's angry and their fuses are short, like the Marine. The Marine is a triple X Marine. You know what I'm talking about? He's like a, he's like the angry inch, you know? He's always, a, he's always tense and angry about something. It's a, not a good way to be. His friends are like that too. Weird, weird group of people. Anyway, so yeah, I'm in Springfield, Missouri. Had to do some things for my son. My son's at therapy. GameStop is right here. As far as I know, it's one of their. It's got to be one of their best locations. It's right in the middle of a a mall, a couple of malls. I mean, this whole city's a mall. Anyway, so yeah, I got my GameStop uh, dividend bags, and uh, on a uh, Oliver's Papa is gonna have to take a break here, and we're just gonna let you talk to just boring old Robert, okay? Um, inside the store, there was a lovely lady named uh, Michelle. She's the manager of that store. She has been the manager there for 13 years, or a manager for 13 years. If she's been at that store or not, I, I, I didn't ask her that. She's been with the company for 13 years. I said, well, have you noticed any sort of changes since, you know, since, um, the, you know, Corporate has changed since the, the board and and since the run up, basically. And she said, "Yes, she has." And she was that guy from Chewy. She was. It really seems like he wants to do some some serious uh, good changes for for the company and for the people who who uh, who work for it. And I said, "I'm really glad to hear that." I said, "Because you get a lot of people that." You talk to them about GameStop, and it's either these burnouts that smoke reefer all day that complain about the prices. Oh, I don't get enough for my games. Or whatever. You know, it's, it, it's bullshit. Or you get these salty, uh, you know, like Camelot, the guy that went on a three-year campaign to badmouth GameStop. If the guy's YouTube channel, um, if the guy's YouTube channel didn't take off, he would have... Uh, He'd been jobless. He'd be on the street somewhere, you know, doing liquor store holdups with a born to lose tattoo or mother on his you know, tattooed on his chest. Um, you know I'm right. Anyway, uh, lovely, lovely manager. The line there was a line. People were lined up in there. There was only two clerks. One was a little. Um, well, you had the manager. She's seasoned. And then you had another guy there. He was a, he was an older guy as well. Um, I'll just say he seemed like he was maybe moving a little slower, but he was doing technical stuff. She was selling, uh, just, you know, there people were bringing things up. She's ringing up where he was examining a, um, I don't know, I, I call them all Nintendos or P, or PlayStation, uh, PSPs, but it wasn't. It was, but it was one of those things. And he clearly knew what he was talking about because he was looking at two different parts on the wall. Then he went back and he looked something up and he looked at the game thing and he, you know, he blew something out of it and looked around and like he, he knew what he was talking about and was trying to help these people. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the staff that, that, that I want to see. There's people in there taking pictures. They had a Mario Day sign that looked like, like, a little, like a little platform that the sign was on. And I don't know if it was meant for this, but kids were standing up there and their parents were taking pictures of them. So... As a shareholder, I, I saw great things. I saw a line. 
I saw people working, knowledgeable people working. I saw families, you know, GameStop families um, having fun taking pictures in the store. That's, you know, that doesn't happen in, in all aspects of retail. People take pictures in their store, right? Um, the curb appeal of the store is just as nice as it's always been. It's a good looking place, kind of small, but um, hopefully that uh, translates into profits. Hopefully they're not paying as much of a, a lease as a couple of their, I don't know if they're competitors, but there's a place across the street, it's about four times the size, that also has a big D&D and, 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 and uh, uh, the, the card game. Uh, market is also addressing that. The, so the store is bigger, but they seem like they do the same kind of thing with the bobbleheads, the the collectibles, and and things like that. But GameStop just has a different has a different feel. I used to play Magic the Gathering, and I don't. I think that's the only time I ever went to GameStop, or when I got somebody a gift. Those are the times I went in there. I've been in GameStop more in the last two months, three, two and a half months, than I have been ever. You know, I'm happy to go. Happy to go. I don't mind spending my money somewhere that uh, actually cares about the people who are invested in their company. And I, you know, that that might never be. I might never be a big spender there. I don't know. If Oliver gets into video games, well. To give you an idea, when Oliver started playing with something, everything was like this atypical play, right? When he first started playing with something like the right way or showing a true interest in the way something worked, it was cars, little toy cars. I bought every track, every every Fisher-Price track, every Little People track, Hot Wheels track. I bought everything from... Branson to Ozark, Target, Walmart. I mean, I I bought it all. I bought it all. And because it was the first time that we saw anything like that. Everything else was spin him upside down. You know, it, it was disheartening to give him any kind of a toy because he didn't, you know, he wouldn't play with it or he'd play with it in a way that wasn't meant to because it was, you know, neurodiverse uh, state. But... Let me tell you something. If he gets into video games, Oliver's pop is going to have to start. Uh, Oliver's pop is going to have to become a gigolo, which means I'm going to have to get my teeth fixed. You know, might have to get the nose straightened out. You know what I'm saying? But if I got, I got to do what I got to do. Because if Oliver's pop gets into video games, mm, we're going to be buying a lot of stuff at GameStop. Um, Whatever Oliver gets into, we, you know, we uh, we will get for him. Anyway, a great visit to, to a great store run by a great manager. Everybody seemed happy in there. Um, exactly what I want to see as a shareholder. Talked to her about Morant's Rants. Wrote it down for her. She's like, well, that looks kind of interesting. When you try to explain some of this kind of stuff, it's like um, the Grateful Dead. Which happens to be well, Oliver's Papa's favorite band in the whole world. Uh, I was very fond of Jerry Garcia. Good man. Anyway, um, it's like trying to explain something to somebody, and they just you know you're passionate about it. It's like religion. Let's take it. Re- you know, and you, oh man, you got to hear this, and this happened, and 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 the good news is this, and. If somebody isn't into it or aware of it, they're kind of at first like, you're, you're in a cult or something, right? You must be. You sound crazy. You try to explain to them the, 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 the attraction of things and why it's appealing and why this is a good idea. and It's healthy and it's not a bad thing. And uh, you get that look, which I understand it, you know, and I know, especially for me or for me, when I get excited about something, I start telling people, they're like, what, what's with this guy, man? Calm down, you know. But she was very uh, 
you know, open to it. And she's like, oh, that looks cool. I said, you got to tell me you're going to watch it. And if you watch it, you got to comment that you were sent, uh, sent by me. She goes, I will, I will. And um, she had optimism as far as her job, her position, and the company that she works for. Um, so likes work at GameStop, likes to be the manager there, and has a bright, uh, ho- you know, a hopeful outlook on the, on the company. The shares, um, they, hit, they hit their accounts once a month. And they can either take them and pay, or they can hold them. And I, I said, please tell me you're holding these shares. And she goes, most of them, yeah. I said, okay. I didn't ask her too much. That's, that's, getting, into, that's getting to be a little private, you know, ask her what she does with her money and that kind of thing. But I did want to know that she was, if she was telling me she was just cashing them out as they came in, I would have been, uh, what, what, bitch? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I probably would have been, what, what? Are you crazy, bitch? No. Anyway, that's it. You know, I'm going to pick up Oliver now. I'm tired. Uh, Oliver's papa's got a lot on his mind. A lot on his mind. He's got some some interesting videos coming up. I think um, stuff that doesn't have have anything to do with roasting these clowns. You know, the these scoundrels, these scallywags. There's the Springfield Skateland. Probably been there since the '70s. What a great American institution. Uh, the, those place institutions, those places are. Um, you know, I don't. I don't like to be a remember me when or remember when guy. Um, I don't like to do uh, remember when conversations in general because usually they're because you don't have anything to talk about in, in the present. But I think part of the charm of, of the country, the, the country I grew up in, like the. The, the, the drive-in movie theaters, the, the roller skating rinks, the, the interactions with people that we, we had. And, um, you know, it's, it's an, I get nostalgic, uh, you know, sentimental type feelings when I, when I see a place like that. And I'll tell you what, on the weekends, they're busy. During the week, they usually have like birthday parties. It's, it's not really that busy. But Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday afternoon, that skate park is packed, you know. And they do have the old they have the old diamond in there, and they do the old line, you know the, and it's, uh, it's a, a, a neat little part of this area of the country that I never thought I'd be back in, you know, I, at least not living in, but here we are. Uh, Oliver would never ever ever have anything to do with Chicago, you know. Um, Oliver's papa might not want anything to do with Chicago anymore. That's where Oliver's papa's from. But um, no, Oliver's, Oliver's more of a, of a country guy. I mean, he was born in the third largest city in Norway, but uh, his, his peace was always found, uh, you know, out walking the trails or, you know, being out in nature. He's a true Norwegian in that sense that uh, he has a connection to nature that uh, is, you can't deny it. And the city is just not for him. It's not for him. Anyway, guys, listen, I just wanted to tell you about GameStop, and I kept you here for 13 minutes. So, you know, I hope you're all having a great Friday. Uh, Don't get too crazy tonight, you know. Take it easy. Remember, you know, life is a marathon, not a sprint. Be careful. Take care of one another. Don't take no wooden nickels.